how's it going, friends? Thank you for tuning in to VR Revelations once again. It's January 14th, the year of our Lord, 2023. So apparently it looks like the UK has finally decided to send Ukraine some uh, battle tanks. Uh, Challenger 2 tanks, to be specific, uh, according to the announcement here, which, as you can see here uh, in this BBC article, uh, the announcement was made by Prime Minister Rishiki Zunak. Now, Ukraine has been asking for tanks since last year, since December. Um, of course, we saw Zelensky travel to the United States pretty much to beg them to send more weapons so that they could launch an offensive and start pushing the Russians back because up to this point, they've pretty much just been uh, taking a defensive stance uh, all the while the Russians continue to advance. And you're not going to win a war defensively. Uh, at some point, you have to launch offensive attacks to drive the enemy backwards. Um, but according to Ukraine, they need about 300 tanks to do so. And the UK here is sending a whopping 12 tanks. Um, so this is kind of uh, laughable here and these aren't even the best tanks these are very special tanks that require very special ammunition and uh, these challenger 2 tanks um, have spare parts uh, have very few spare parts that are difficult to find and so pretty much uh, this is almost kind of symbolic they sort they sort of just want to show uh, you know the Ukraine's allies that hey, look, we're sending tanks, we're ready to support the uh, war effort more, more directly with these offensive weapons. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they want to take the first step since all these other nations have been hesitant to send uh, better weapons, better battle tanks, better fighter jets. Now, I just recently made a video um, titled uh, The Fear of Mutual Assured Destruction, and why all these nations have been hesitant to send their best weapons into Ukraine in mass numbers. And, of course, in that video I covered the news that Germany um, has been very uh, hesitant to send their Leopard tanks uh, to Ukraine because they fear that, you know, that's going to draw the Russians' attention towards Germany. And... Uh, of course, Germany isn't a nuclear superpower, so they don't want to get involved against the Russians. And they fear that uh, Russia could, uh, you know, feel itself uh, being threatened even more. And so it could resort to use uh, nuclear missiles. And, you know, Germany pretty much wants to see the U.S. send their best tanks into Ukraine. And then that way they'll feel more comfortable uh, in sending their tanks since, you know, in that case, if Russia does decide to uh, attack Germany, let's say, right, or focus its attention also on Germany, then Germany will have the backing of the United States. So all these major superpowers, right, that have all these weapons um, sort of have been sitting back kind of uh, apprehensive to, to send their best weapons to help the Ukrainians. All the while, the Ukrainians keep growing more desperate for these weapons uh, as the Russians continue to advance. And so what the UK essentially is doing here is they're sort of dipping their toe in the water and saying, hey, look at us, right? We're getting, we're getting ready to go in, um, but just barely. Uh, and, you know, this isn't going to make the slightest difference. This is laughable. Um the best they could do with 12 tanks is literally just patrol the areas right now that they control still. Uh, so, you know, we'll, I, I guess the idea here is that they think that the United States and Germany are going to follow in their steps and decide to send their best tanks. Uh, Poland just uh, said that they wanted to send around 14 of their uh, Leopard tanks, their German-made tanks. You know, they bought them from Germany, but Germany has the license to those tanks. So it doesn't matter what other countries have them. They can't send them to Ukraine without the Germans' permission. 
But Germany doesn't want to allow that until the United States sends some of their best tanks. And the United States isn't willing to send their best tanks, the Abram tanks, uh, because they're scared that the war will escalate and Russia, you know, might use their nuclear arsenal. And at that point, you know, if Russia were to use, let's say, small tactical nuke on Ukraine, then what's the United States going to do? Respond with nuclear weapons? We're really going to initiate World War III, the end of the world over Ukraine? No, the Americans aren't willing to do that. On top of that, uh, you know, even with these 12 tanks that the UK is apparently going to send here, uh, it's going to take them some time there to figure out how to use them effectively. So uh, not only are they sending very uh, small numbers of tanks, but it's going to take the Ukrainians uh, a while to figure out how to use them. And even if they jump into them right away and deploy them, uh, they're likely to get defeated because of their lack of knowledge of how the tank is supposed to be used. And so, you know, this is this is kind of like a nothing burger here. It's, it's just pretty much symbolic. Let's go ahead and take a look at the article here. Uh, the UK is to send Challenger 2 tanks to Ukraine to bolster the country's war effort. Prime Minister Rishi Zunax has said... He spoke to Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky in a call on Saturday during which he confirmed he would send the equipment and additional artillery systems, uh, number 10 said. Downing Street said the move shows the UK's ambition to intensify the support. Oh yeah, very ambitious, sending 12 tanks that aren't even your best. Yeah, that's very ambitious. The BBC understands the initial commitment is for about a dozen tanks, President Zelensky has thanked the UK, saying that the decision to send the tanks will not only strengthen us on the battlefield, but also send the right signal to other partners, right? This is all about signals. They're pretty much trying to signal uh, the United States uh, that, hey, we're waiting on you, right? We're waiting, we're waiting on you to sort of go all in in the war effort and, and send uh, the armaments that the UK Ukrainians require in order to start pushing the Russians back. But again, they're afraid, and rightly so. They're dealing with a nuclear superpower here. This isn't Iraq, this isn't Vietnam, this isn't all these other little countries that you can just bully. He said the UK support was always strong and was now impenetrable. Number 10, what what is what do they mean by number 10? What the heck is this? Number 10 said that said that during the call, Mr. Zunak and Mr. Zelensky also discussed, okay, look at this, uh, and Mr. Zelensky also discussed also recent Ukrainian victories, okay, that's not worded correctly there, as well as the need to seize on this moment with an acceleration of global military and diplomatic support. Uh, what Ukrainian victories are they talking about? They literally just lost Solidar. Um, but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and show you two videos here that are reporting on this. This is from Sky News. These guys are like crazy uh, propagandist and biased uh, in favor of Ukraine. Literally, the, everything uh, they report on is like almost made up, right? They, they'll, they pretend like Ukraine is like winning constant battles and they're like close to defeating Russia and then when it's pretty much undeniable, they'll come out like looking goofy and report that, uh, no, as a matter of fact, they were wrong all along. Uh, and, you know, Russia is continuing to conquer cities. Then we have a BBC report here also talking about uh, these 12 tanks that the UK is going to be sending. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the BBC video here and just pay attention because... Again, this is such a laughable small number of tanks that when these guys like mention the number, you can almost see that they that you know they kind of want to laugh because they, they can't believe just how ridiculous this uh, amount of tanks is. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Ukrainian capital Kyiv has been hit by a missile attack with critical infrastructure apparently the target. Journalists reported a series of explosions overnight, saying that warning systems had failed to sound the alarm. 
The mayor of Kyiv, Vitaly Klitschko, urged people to take shelter and said that missile debris had fallen in the west of the city. Now, Ukraine correspondent James Waterhouse has more from Kyiv. There were a series of reported of explosions from around 4 a.m. this morning. Concerningly, the uh, sirens didn't sound for a couple of hours, but what we are being told is that missiles have struck in the eastern flank of the city, and the authorities are saying that infrastructure has been hit. We don't know where, and we don't know what. Now, Kyiv and so many cities around Ukraine are used to threats from the sky. Uh, and at the moment, we don't know where this current threat is coming from. It could be. So this guy is talking about the missile attack that just took place today, which I covered on my previous video that I just released. So go take a look at that. Um, this is the first wave of missile attacks on infrastructure, uh, you know, this year. And uh, apparently the missile defense systems were not effective here. They weren't able to stop these strikes. It can sometimes be missile strikes from the Caspian Sea. It can be through Russian fighter jets uh, in airspace in Belarus, where they have stationed troops and, and, and aircraft. We just don't know at this stage. Uh, but even if, you know, the city's air defense systems are fairly effective, but not completely effective. So missiles can get through. And even if missiles are intercepted, the falling debris uh, poses a real threat as well. So we, like the rest of the city, will, will stay down here and, and, and wait to hear more. Well, the strikes come as the UK Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, said Britain would send tanks to Ukraine along with additional artillery support during a phone call with the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. For more on that, here's our political correspondent, David Wallace Lockhart. The two leaders have spoken this morning and we've got a, a readout from Downing Street with a spokesperson saying that... Again, last, Decem uh, last December, uh, Zelensky was asking for 300 tanks. So just keep that in mind. That was last December, before the loss of Solidar and the uh, occurring, uh, current uh, negative outlook for uh, Ukraine. So they probably need more than 300 at this point. So just keep that in mind as they report on these 12 tanks the UK is sending. Uh, they spoke about the success of Ukrainian victories they'd been and agreed that now was the time to seize the moment with an acceleration of global military and diplomatic support to Ukraine. Part of that from Downing Street will be sending Challenger 2 tanks and additional artillery systems. My understanding is we're talking about around a dozen tanks being sent to Ukraine. But if we think back to, to when uh, this conflict was beginning, there was a big stress on the UK would help with defensive weaponry. Now, I think number 10 would still say in the context this ultimately will be used, it is still defensive weaponry, but we can certainly see the, the support. Yeah, can somebody explain to me how tanks are defensive weapons? Uh, you know, the last I checked, those are offensive weapons. So I don't, it doesn't matter what, you know, the Western powers say, uh, if they try to label it as defensive weapons, like, are, are you serious? Like, you think the Russians are, uh, you know, gonna believe that, that these are defensive weapons, tanks? in terms of weapons that the UK has been giving Ukraine certainly stepped up throughout this conflict. And, and will this latest tranche of weaponry make any significant or material difference to the direction of the war actually on the ground? I think... Yeah, I'm sure the Ukrainians are going to launch a major offensive here with these 12 tanks. Yeah. In isolation, the honest answer to that would have to be probably no. These are 12 tanks we think we're talking about. Ukraine are talking about the need for 300 tanks. But where this could uh, be significant is the UK is now the first NATO country to pledge uh, that it will give tanks to, to Ukraine. European countries like Poland would like to, but there's a slight complexity around their... This is, like, this is like if somebody needs an operation, right, and let's say they need like $50,000... And me contributing, contributing two pennies saying, hey, guys, are you guys going to help? I already gave money. This is what that's like.
German-made tanks and Germany has to sign off on that. There's going to be a meeting of European defence ministers this coming week where there, there could be important implications there. The US, of course, another country that people will be looking at with interest to see what they do next. So I think the significance of this will all be about the, the message this sends from the UK and perhaps other countries uh, then... Uh yeah, I also like how they're all waiting to see what the U.S. has to say. Like, if they're wait, they're all waiting to see how to see if the U.S. is gonna go all in, right? Um, I thought, I thought, you know, this this was personal to them, right? This was a fight for democracy. So why are they waiting for the United States to go all in so that they can follow? So essentially, they're saying, hey, if the U.S. doesn't go all in, then we're not gonna help uh, very much. And again. Uh, things are starting to unravel now, and I think we're going to see that, you know, the U.S. is not going to go all in, and support is going to drop for Ukraine, and Zelensky is going to eventually flee the country, or be toppled. That's my prediction. Uh, having to consider whether or not they're willing to make a, a, a similar contribution, which, of course, uh, could then perhaps start to, to change things, or at least start to creep towards that 300 number that Ukraine says they need. Just to pick up on something you said earlier, the UK will be probably framing this in terms of it being provided as defensive equipment. If Russia doesn't see it that way, and Russia sees it as, as, as uh, equipment uh, that is uh, part of an off offensive, it almost doesn't matter what the UK uh, portrays it as. If, 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 it, if it comes to it and Russia sees a NATO country arming... Tanks are offensive weapons, once again, guys. <laughs> the fact that they're even trying to make this out to be like, oh, well, you know, the UK is saying they're defensive weapons, but do, do you think the Russians will believe that? Uh, Ukraine in that way, uh, what response could there be to that? Well, it's part of the, the complexities of this whole conflict. And from a Russian perspective, it can see Western nations consistently trying to... to aid Ukraine with, with military help in order to fight uh, a conflict against Russia, something obvious. Uh, again, I've already covered this in previous videos. Russia has already stated that they see this as a war against NATO, America, and Britain. So, uh, yeah, the Russians are way ahead of this guy. Obviously, uh, the Russian state, the Russian leadership is not going to be particularly happy about. And I think when we look at what comes out of countries like Germany that perhaps uh, are quite sensitive around this area, we can certainly see that being a consideration. And obviously action that the UK has taken directly against Russia in terms of things like sanctions. Yeah, sanctions that have backfired pretty much. Now let's go to Sky News here. Uh, who even, you know, once Sky, Sky, uh, Sky News reports negatively on the situation, you know, it's got to be like twice as bad. Let's go ahead. They're talking about the tanks here also, so. Retired Air Vice Marshal Sean Bell. Hello again to you, Sean. This is something we've been talking about um, this morning, confirmation that they are, well, they have plans to send. How significant is it? Yeah, it's uh, worth remembering, uh, President Zelensky in Ukraine, if they are to prevail in this war, they need to get onto the offence. There's been much talk about a spring offensive, but if that is to work, they... Uh, a Ukrainian spring offensive? Right. Um, they're literally hoping to survive this spring, so I don't know what this guy's talking about there. And they're definitely not going to launch an offensive with 12 tanks, I can tell you that much desperately need tanks. Now, they have a lot of tanks, um, but they're all former Soviet Union tanks, which are relatively vulnerable, particularly if they're going to go on the attack against Russia. So what they need is modern tanks to be able to for this spring offensive. There's been lots of speculation for days that the UK will give up some Challenger 2 main battle tanks that are shown here. Um, one of the features of this tank has been around since the mid-90s, but it's got this Chopham armour on it, which will take a direct hit from a relatively modern T-72 Russian tank and won't destroy it. Um, the downside of this is that these tanks, there's not that many of them about. The only uh, users of them, the UK and Oman, we've only got, I think, 227 of them. I understand 143 are due to be upgraded to Challenger 3. Leaves only about 79 that are available that might have been disposed of, so there is the potential. But when you have a, a tank only available in small numbers, the spares are only available in small numbers, it's a specific round that's fired from these because it's got a rifled barrel, so they're not available in big numbers either. 
Labour. Um, but, um, you know, it, it does appear that if um, that, that President, um, our Prime Minister has uh, confirmed today that in a conversation with President Zelensky that the UK is going to provide, we understand, about 10 of these tanks to Ukraine, woefully short of the numbers of tanks that they'd actually need, which is probably well over 100. But, of course, there just aren't the numbers of uh, no, Ukraine last de December said they needed 300. Those to provide. The Which means they probably need around 500 now. The key reason for this, though, appears to be unlocking European opportunities to export the Leopard 2 tank. Yeah, so again, this is just symbolic. Uh, 12 tanks, that's laughable. The UK is pretty much just trying to act like, you know, they're actually helping... Uh, the Ukrainians here, but really it's just, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's a symbolic move. They're, they're trying to encourage uh, Germany to allow the Leopard tanks to be sent into Ukraine, and they're trying to encourage the United States to send their best weapons, but they're not going to do so, guys, because Russia at that point is uh, going to resort to nuclear weapons. They're going to resort to possibly small tactical nuclear bombs they're not going to use their bigger biggest ones and they all know this they all know this that's why they haven't sent their best equipment um but yeah uh there you have it guys 12 tanks uh coming towards the russians so yeah leave me your thoughts and opinions down below guys and remember the truth is stranger than fiction Anyways, have a wonderful day and God bless.